county. There's legal stuff too. You got to have. Yeah. That's all fine and dandy, but some of the other stuff, you know, me and Brett can sit down and go through it. If you know, if that's you choose to move forward and, and try and clean it up or just make things a little more, yep. a little more black and white as to what's going on and, and kind of. It's good in, in areas we've discussed to have some gray areas on things. But there's certain things that you got to have definitive also. Yes, I mean, I, when so. we talked about performance evaluations and different things that are in here that have never even been looked at. Um, EMTs. EMTs were supposed to be hired. EMTs were moved up to firefighters. That was not in here, which increased the cost right. because of, yeah. of the need for um, more expertise, I guess you could say. For me, I'm still struggling a little bit because as an elected official, um, I sat in on this meeting also and I felt like my integrity because I echo some of the things that uh, James had said. Yeah. I wasn't at the meeting, so I'm not even aware of the letter that got read, so I mean, I'm kind of in the dark so, on that one. Well, it, 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 he was correct with what he said. Right. So, and then I do have a little bit of concerns because even at the last meeting, I know that it was, it was very briefly discussed, but I was under the full impression that when everybody walked out of the room, because Elizabeth had also stated and we concurred that it was dollar for dollar. You know, you guys can hash that with the city, like I says. I just well, know, I just I, know what went on ahead of time, and that Elizabeth did meet with Jeanette. And, and like I said, and I, and I told, told you, and I told Travis. I said Jeanette got flustered in the meeting. She didn't have her papers with her, and she's like, "Yeah, it's like dollar for dollar." And she even relayed it when the councilman put it. I think I misrepresented this meeting. So it's it's that's something you guys got to decide. Is what I'm saying. It wasn't something that. Um, no, I, intentionally I, got thrown in your face is what I'm trying no, to say. And, and I appreciate that, Pat. Thank yeah. you. Um, but um, I feel like... And if that's a proposal I, you guys go back to, throw back the city dollar for dollar. That's, I mean, I don't what know. I, that's what I was thinking is, is countering with the dollar for dollar. Right. And then later on we'll sit down. You guys can sit down uh, so far as yeah. the... Um, and like I say, that, that's stuff for you guys. You know, me, me and Brett will... We'll work the logistics side of it and make things work, and we'll make it work on our end. It's up to your board and the city board to come in agreement of, of what you guys want to pay or what you want to do or, or don't do. I mean, that's out of our that's out of our hands. Okay. But we're just here to tell you we, we can make it work if, if that's the path you guys choose. On the billing part, do you guys are you guys going to continue to bill for ambulance services and whatnot? We will. I mean, there, there was a discussion on that, and there's, and uh, you know, Travis has been made aware of it. There's just what happens on the billing until the reports get completed by the volunteers in the system that they are. This ESO is the the reports that we do for all the medical reports until they go in and finish all the paperwork, dot all the I's, cross the T's, and lock it. That's when it can get sent to the billing company. And right now, you've had five bills got sent to the billing company. And where where stuff so. happened? Is, is there why Brett wasn't yeah. aware? He was he was looking in the right area of the right. The we got that clarified with Brett of where you got to go. So I, I've got to do it constantly. You know, we got a policy that our volunteers got to have their reports done in 48 hours. Granted, people got kids and it takes a little longer sometimes. But I'm on the phone calling. Hey, you got to get this report done so I can get it billed. I told Brett that's the same thing you're going to have to do. You're yeah. going to have to start going through these reports. And you're yeah. going to have to call your volunteers and tell them, hey, you guys got to. Yeah. You know, going on the ambulance to the car wreck and treating the patient, that's all the fun stuff. And then when it's over, then you got that hour and a half of paperwork you got to do. That's the not so fun stuff. There's but it's got to be done if you want to get paid. The filter parameter in ESO that I did wasn't aware of until Pat and Bo Oh, yeah. We got, we got Brett, Brett scored away on that so he can start getting on the volunteers who are running the calls who are not completing them to, to get them completed. But if you can't get them calls completed, you can't bill for them. Yeah. And the billing company just straight up, the, the, the way the system's set up, until it's completed and locked, you can't even forward it on to the billing company. So. Yeah. And we can't do it, can I, if we weren't on the call? No. we can't falsify a record. So it's yeah. got to be the people that ran on that ambulance that's the ones who got to complete it. Yeah. And it's something I deal with regularly. Yeah. I mean, I deal with it with my, you know, my volunteer people all the time. I mean, they got kids, got baseball games, this and that. And it's like, come on, we've been three days, we've got to get these done. This is... You know, there's a reason behind we've got to get these done on time. Absolutely. So, 
as we look at all the options that are here. And that's why I bring this up. During your billing and your attempt to get paid, the patient is waiting on pins and needles that he might be billed. And one of the things we've got on the other side, I'm trying to be fair to everybody, is this MedEx plan, no patient gets billed. There is no billing. They, yeah. they take care of it. Huge. And my, my well, they get billed. Their insurance company all gets billed. Yeah. But they handle it. Right. So the yeah. patient is okay. And what my primary concern is what is in the best interest of all the citizens of White Pine County. Now, are so they going to are they going to when they when they respond on call to McGill, are they going to push McGill out of the way and automatically transport? Or are they going to still let you guys transport calls? Or are they just going to force your volunteers out? Because I don't see MedEx want to do this agreement if they're not getting to transport patients a bill for it. Well, we'll hear from. But that's that's like I said, that's your guys' deal. But and we will hear from MedEx hopefully in just a yeah. second. But I'm trying to address the three different options. Yeah. What is in the best interest of Citizens. And like I say, the one thing you want to look at is the only option that the city's been aware of is option one. We've never been made, nobody's reached out to anybody on the council or anything about option two to see if there's an appetite going forward for mutual aid or any of that. Like I explained to Travis, you know, mutual aid and automatic aid are totally different. So with mutual aid, say you have a fire, say, Lori Carson's house, you've got to wait for Brett to run an engine from Station One or McGill. When they get on scene, if they can't handle it, then they request mutual aid from the city. It's not the minute there's a call south of town, you call the city, because that's automatic aid. So they're two different things. So yeah. that's one thing you want to consider also. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, you correct me if I'm wrong. Upwards over 90% of all calls that we have city and county are within the city limits. Or, 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 excuse me, I'll take that back. They're emergency medical as opposed to fire. Probably, well, as opposed to fire, yeah. But when you got fire, then you got auto accidents and the different things that go with it. So, so probably 85 percent, probably the safe number. Okay. Uh, it's that way nationwide, so it's not like we're unique. As I read in this agenda item, with all, and, and you say that nobody has brought this back. This was on the county's agenda. We discussed it. Uh, a week ago when we had this on here, it's yeah. public information, the city should have had it, the city should have Well, had they had it, it but nobody's yeah. approached them about doing anything with it, is just my point. Well, what we're here today is just to make a decision, and I, I would yeah. think that the city would have uh, jumped on this and said, wait, let's see if we can't delay this or do whatever. So item one is a modified contract with you guys. Item two is the contract with MedEx for emergency services only. Item three is to uh, a combination of MedEx and E City Fire. So those are the three options that we have. And as we, my primary interest, I've got no problem. I, I like the way the city and the county are running. I, I get, get this right, I do like that. But my, my real concern is the guy who doesn't have any money or doesn't have any insurance and he's got the pressure of getting billed for it. My life flight to Reno was $67,000 four years ago, $67,000. I'm lucky I was insured and paid 100%. But what about the poor person who isn't or doesn't have or has a deductible? And that's that's where I, it comes in with the option of uh, splitting the medical part. I asked the, uh, the uh, MedEx people about a helicopter because right now we're so short in the outlying areas, Baker, Cherry Creek, London. Uh, and of course that may be an option, but bottom line is, as far as uh, who responds and what, I'm not privy to any of that. I've never heard anybody really complain about any of it. But my, my primary concern is the citizens and out-of-pocket pay. And I just, and I think that's something that is a little better on the medic side than on your side. But I've got no problem with the way the city and the county operate. I do on the billing, but I do want to hear from the MedEx people. And, it, and you can counter if you'd like. Yeah. But if, does any other commissioner have anything for these two? I do want to hear from MedEx. I think that's only fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have anything else you want to add? No. The yeah. only thing I want to add is, regardless of which way it goes, him and I are still going to have to work together. <laughs> so yeah. it's inevitable. So, and we always will. Okay. So. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And I, I appreciate what the president put down here. Now, if FedEx would come forward and please present with their
Sure. Uh, good morning. Uh, sure. I'll uh, make sure this is close this time. Um, Paul Ward, the executive director for MedEx, for the record. Uh, so just a couple things, a lot of good discussion today. Uh, and, you know, the, the thing that I, I, I love from emergency medical services, I'm a paramedic by training, and so to see collaboration happening and things getting worked out is what, what I hope to achieve every day. So I think it's already been a win for the day as, as it is. Uh, speaking to some of the things about us, us specifically, uh, so with, with Medix, uh, you are correct. We, we, we work very hard to ensure that patients are cared for without uh, burdening them with any un undue financial burden. There's a lot of factors at play right now within the industry that are uh, advocating for more of a patient-centered approach in medical transport, and, and it's really industry-wide. It's not going to be something just specific to MedEx. And so it's very exciting to see the direction that we're, that we're going with that. Uh, for us, we're very proud of the fact that that's something we pioneered years ago and that the rest of the industry is going that direction. So uh, to, your, to your point, um, there's uh, a lot of ways that we can ensure that a patient doesn't uh, endure any kind of undue financial burden. And so like you said, things are expensive. Uh, people are insured. Sometimes they're not. And we like to make sure that nobody's going to get a, a sense of collections or anything like that for that nature. Um, far as uh, collaboration and working together on scenes and that sort of a thing, uh, do we bill for transports? Yes, we do. Is that what we live and die by? No, it's not. So in that moment, whatever is the most important for that patient, if by chance the, the volunteers at one of the outlying agencies, they, they, they have the unit, they want, us, they want to take the call to completion and take it into town, Great, we'll, we'll be supportive of that decision. And so it's not a, we're not in a turf war, we're not here to, to take call for call, uh, you know, every call that matters. The, the goal is, are we providing a service to the community? Are we providing quality patient care and making sure that things are getting taken care of? And so that's the, that's the direction that we're gonna take that. And so it's not a, a sort of a, we're posturing for, for every call and we're gonna, you know, push somebody out of the way. It was, this is a collaboration, we're here to work together, and we're gonna make sure that everybody gets transported appropriately. So with that, I, you know, I'd entertain any questions. If there was a call down in 318, and would you guys roll on every call? For, let's say there's an auto accident, so automatically, there's probably seven there. Would you roll on every call, or do you wait for the city or the, the county to call you and say, Come on, we need you. Okay. So, uh, what's, what's forgive on? me, um, is that within the county yeah. uh, that, that you're talking about? Okay, well, yes. uh, wait a minute. It might not be within, because we have a mutual aid agreement with Nye County on 318 South. Okay. Uh, okay. And even on Highway 6. So when we cross borders, White Pine County does that. Mm -hmm. Would MedEx be on board with crossing that border? Sure. Yeah, so th that's, a, that's a great question. Because um, you can see how <coughs> the boundaries can really cause some confusion in a lot of things. And I think... To, to draw from an example of something that we're already currently doing, um, we have uh, the ambulance in Wells. Uh, we provide the primary 911 unit there. Uh, we're the only ambulance uh, between Elko and Wendover at that point. And so our agreement is specifically with the city. Now, it is well, well recognized by all the parties involved, but it is, in, it is in the best interest of the community for us to respond to anything that we're called to uh, in that area because we're the ambulance. And so we don't want to see uh, our, another ambulance drive by our ambulance to respond to the call. So to your point, we'll, we'll respond to the best interests of the community as kind of directed by, by everybody involved. Well, that really opens my mind because I don't want to hear a, a call is at 318 out by Sunnyside and MedEx says, that's not our territory. We're not sure. going out there. And then all of a sudden you've got somebody laying out there and then the city or the county has to respond. We need uh, the territory, and I say territory, White Money County certainly but we have agreements with Elko County towards Wendover on Highway 50. We have agreements with Nye County on Highway 6, Lincoln County on, 90, on 93 and 318. But we need assurances that when there's a call, it don't make a difference. If you are the, if we agree to go to MedEx for the support of the Ely and White Pine County, we need assurances that you're going to go to 318. I mean, that's, I think that opens up a whole new window because I understand the legal part, we can't fly into Nye County or we can't fly here. But what does it do? We're trying to make this right and make the city and the county and everybody right. And I'm really not trying to be long-winded. I've got a bunch of questions on this deal. I want to make sure I make the right vote here or the right decision. And I, I like 
medics because of your equipment, your qualified candidates, you have EMT, the hall, that's what you do. I know that the city and the county have EMTs and they have firefighters and combination EMT firefighters. I understand all that. But where do we go? I mean, I, I, I just see this could open up a can of worms as far as legal. So if I, if I can just uh, comment briefly, I think what Paul was being sensitive to, correct me if I'm wrong, when he asked that question about was that in the county, I think the, the purpose of that question was that he, the answer wasn't going to be he's going to encroach on the city's you know, purview. It, was, was that what you were, so he was saying was, it, what was the area you were talking about in the city in which you know, the city has the right to respond and, and call and mutual aid if they need it? Or was it in the outlying areas? I, I think okay. I mean, the, the fact that they're already working in wells and everything, I think they're certainly willing to go outside of the county, you know, pursuant to our mutual aid agreements that we have with other counties. Thanks for that, because that involves medics in the city. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, and also the park, the national park, out that way too. I've got a, a, a question. That, one of the appealing things about your proposal is the, the no balance billing. Do you accept what the insurance? The, the thing I'm curious about is is we've got, there's a pretty big sector in our community that kind of falls between the cracks. They don't have insurance, but they make too much money for Medicaid. They have no, no insurance whatsoever. If you transport one of them and they have no insurance, that's not an automatic freebie though, right? You're, you are going to bill them. We, we work with them to make sure they're not going to be billed anything that they're not going to be able to handle. Uh, and so we, we do our best to make sure not going to get a bill uh, and uh, do what we can with them. But you are correct. We're, we're doing that in Elko. We're doing that um, for the people in Wells that we transport. Um, you know, we're, we're not. Nobody's going to get sent to collections. Nobody's going to get transported. And in that moment, you know, I, I don't have insurance. That that's not going to be a worry on their mind. That's good to hear. Does anyone else on the commission have anything? I think we've discussed this both last meeting and this meeting. Right? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you know, I. Whatever way this goes, you know, I'm not like going to be anti either way for those, of course. Um, I guess is my chief concern is what Pat brought up was that there's that 15%, and that's what really puts me over to, to going with the city is that 15%. You know, if we don't, you know, mutual aid or whatever we do, if we do go with MedEx, it's that 15% is we don't, you know, the volunteers, you know, are going to do their best and, and are great folks. But I think to me, I really feel comfortable that, okay, I know that that was 15% of calls at qualifier or an apparatus and such that those are, you know, that there are, are paid and trained staff that will be backing up, you know, our volunteers on that. Um, I just, I have, I had a real hard time letting that 15% not fall through the cracks, but not be served as well as it, as, as it is now. And that, that, that's where, that's where I come. I think, you know, things are working good with the city. Yes, you have this other bucket of the political side, which, you know, we can discuss if we want to go forward as is or toss it back at the dollar for dollar, you know, either way. But that, that, that's, where I, that's where I tend to, you know, go uh, be on the city side is just that 15% it, uh, does, does give me a little pause. What, but do you think it wouldn't be, look, I, I mean, I, I want to know, it can be more specific. Yeah, so, what do you think will happen? Okay, so for example, We'll just use your house as an example again. Okay. <laughs> Something. Okay. We go mutual aid. I wish I had my pawns back. <laughs> uh, so then, you know, a volunteer has to respond out of McGill or Station One, go all the way through Ely, right past the city's fire fire station, and then they have to get on scene to do, you know, to assess what's going on, and then they would have to call the city. So we're talking another, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Who knows what before. Your property would be getting service on a fire specific accident agreement now they just be on that whereas out. right now they would roll out and be at your house 15 20 minutes earlier than the contract and maybe i'm making a mistake because I, I in my mind as the right thing to do with the citizens i'm automatically thinking that that can be worked out i mean from all my discussions it's hard economically to make it where it's an automatic on the fire side at least would that's it, what. Would we looked at the seventy-five thousand. Well, an odd, well, once again, your automatic aid versus mutual aid, and none of those have been, you know. So if we go with medics today, and then, you know, the city's going to have to be a part of two and three, and we're back to, you know, having these, you know, same political things. Yeah, it's back to that. Uh, what made it 
financially viable for them with being able to run the ambulance stuff. And, and past history tells me that, that going back to those aid agreements, it didn't work. I mean, I, I mean, contract. We had sheets and sheets of uh, uh, calls that had gone awry because of uh, improper. We didn't we, we didn't have proper protocols for dispatching how things were handled, and we constantly had accident scenes and fires, things where where people were waiting for service when there was a station much closer to them, with with the staff ready to rock and roll and. I just, uh, I've got to agree with you guys. That 15% uh, gives me great pause. Yeah, I mean, if FedEx was, yeah, we got fire and apparatus, and uh, that'd be pretty appealing. But where, you know, I think their medical service and what they could provide to the patients is great. And I love the whole privatization side of it. Um, that's that's just what gives me, that's what gives me pause. And, and I'll be the first to admit, there's a lot of things that I don't agree with on the city. And I agree with, the you know, Richard and the, our, some of our conversations on more of the bureaucratic and these other things, but I think on police and fire, we have to park those issues at the door and granted, you know, what was said wasn't right. And, you know, I talked to Elizabeth and James about, uh, about that, and, you know, and then I heard from what Pat had to say. So, you know, you know that that is what it is. It's politics, and it, unfortunately, it gets nasty. It, it should be that way, but, um, you know, I think there's way we can, you know, there's kind of two buckets here, the political side and what's actually happening. I think what's actually happening is really good. You know, we, we can figure out, you know, whatever the, you know, if we want to, whatever on the on the money side, we can we can make that motion here today or, or what. That, that's where I come down to it. And like I said, I think there's positives and negatives to both sides of it. So I'm not, you know, 100% one way or, or zero or the other. But, I, you know, that's, 15%, like I said, is where, where it comes down to me is that gives me pause with, Going the other direction. I, um, where I'm having a little bit of heartburn, I probably could be easily resolved. Um, if we renew this contract uh, with the city as we think as is, um, I'd like to see some kind of amendment to the contract to stop us from being in this position again. What do I mean by that? I mean, um, we had a contract for much longer than right now, but and yes. all of a sudden, two years into it, they want to come back and say we want more money. Now, I don't, I, I think it's reasonable to put into contract to say, come back and say, this is way costing us way more than we thought, and we'd like to renegotiate. But I'd like to stop us from, okay, we gave them more money, we renewed, and then two years later again, here we are, yeah, we're gonna, bring, we're gonna cancel the contract unless you give us more. I don't wanna play this game. I wanna contract, serve the people, and be done with it. And I, and I can speak to the part of, you know, just what I heard from Pat, the city's perspective is when they opened this up, it was COVID and the call volume wasn't coming in like we had anticipated. Um, and then as that rolled on, you know, things obviously looked a lot better. So that, that just saying from the other side of the fence, that's, that's what I heard. To be clear though, the city's yes. position did not change. They, they, that was said in the negotiations that, hey look, when we first decided to cancel this contract, you know, we thought the sky was falling. Turns out the sky's not falling. But they never said, you know what, we're good. We'll withdraw right. or, or have a motion to reinstate. That they, they they stuck to their guns about asking for more, more money. And you, and you heard the, I mean, so so that I mean, I I agree that that was probably the initial concern, but uh, that didn't change behavior in any way as as information changed. So I guess it, I I would be fine moving forward with this. If um, you know, if I was going to make a motion on that, it would probably include um, our DA and the city attorney maybe working out some language to, I guess, make it more difficult to to cancel the contract. Is that we can do that? We 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 we, we just can, not make it so that we can they, either either side gets to decide to cancel for no reason. No, this is a contract, and unless there's a material breach um, or a financial emergency. There's no reason. Don't sign the contract if you don't think you can do it. Yeah. Well, so the problem with the financial emergency is is as defined by whom. Right. Um, so we we can put language right now. There's language in uh, that allows the the city and the, and the county to come together yearly, talk about you know negotiating any changes that may need to be negotiated without putting the actual contract in jeopardy. That that's that's currently in the current contract, and we can certainly leave that language. Uh, what we can take out is 
is any termination outside of material breach if, if you know, the, the council decides that. Okay. I, I'm sorry. You know, I, I really would like to see us look at um, the different types of aids in regards to an aid agreement. And I also would like to, um, you know, on the fire side, I think that we need to, to look at that a little bit more too. Uh, is, it, is it possible, this is Dr. Vitale, I have a couple questions on the medical record. Uh, yeah, we're going to get you a little louder. Go ahead, state your name and who you are, who you're with. Sure, I'm uh, Dr. Vitale, I'm the medical director for uh, the county and for the city, EMS. So I have a couple of questions here. One is, is uh, I'm concerned, because right now we have a quick convoluted situation with the county and the city. Now you're going to add a third entity into this, and it's going to be even more convoluted. Um, so I'm very concerned about that. The other concern was just brought up about making a contract with the city of not being able to breach that. It, you know that has to be uh, the same thing with medics if you go that way. It has to be the same thing. The medics can't come back and say, "Oh, we're not filling patients, so we're not making money." So you got to come back to you and get more money. So that needs to be done with the, the medics as well. Um, and, and the other issue I have is. What is the qualifications? I have not heard from medics what the qualifications are of these uh, EMTs or EMT advances that they're going to have. Now, we, we need to understand that um, we have a very unique situation in, in the county with our qualifications that we have of our advances, because we don't have enough paramedics in our county. So we're getting variances for our our uh, advances so they can do certain things in our county that uh, advanced uh, EMTs can't normally do. So the concern is, is that medics may not have this, the county doesn't have enough to the individuals, so you're going to have to fall back on the city anyway to come out there and take care of this patient. And for my concern is, as a physician, is I want to do what's in the best for all of our patients, regardless of our cost. I know you guys are concerned with cost. I'm concerned with cost, but the bottom line is it's got to be what's in the best interest of our patients. And that is, that is first and foremost, in my mind, what's the qualifications of the individuals going out there? Have they met all those qualifications? And the other issue is, is who's going to be the medical director for medics? You can't have medics having one medical director going out somewhere. And I'm a medical director of the county, and then you have medics having a medical director. There's going to be a conflict, I think. So again, that is going to be greatly convoluted having three entities involved. Thank you. Anything else, anybody? You know, Paul was going to address the concerns. Right. Sure, so very, very valid points. Or Mr. Works, sorry. Points. Yeah, that's okay. I, I uh, don't know you well enough, <laughs> sorry. Very valid points to bring up. So uh, we, our, our ambulances are staffed at the advanced EMT level. Uh, and so that's uh, an advanced EMT and an EMT that are uh, working together in the unit. Uh, they are, uh, they have some advanced certifications of ACLS, PALS, and PHTLS. Uh, and so that's in addition to what the state requires. Um, so we went uh, beyond what the state requires for the advanced EMT scope and uh, had them become certified with those credentials as well. Uh, we do have some paramedics, uh, and so that's mainly in the Elko area. Uh, as stated from our last meeting, when we did present all of the information about us, we discussed an advanced EMT service because that's what's currently being implemented here uh, and, is, and is serving the community rather well. And to, to the physician's point, it, the paramedics, uh, just nationwide, it, there is a, a staffing shortage, much like much of the other healthcare professions, and so you have to be very careful about setting a precedent that the, you then cannot fill. And so with the advanced EMT scope of the national scope of standards that are out there, uh, it's a, they, they really can provide a great service to the community within that scope. Uh, and uh, there are times when you know, paramedics do well in some areas, but as it sits right now, the advanced EMT scope works really well for this area. Um, and then obviously we do have the flight crew side, and that gets into the critical care level stuff. Um, and those are critical care nurses and paramedics. And so kind of a, a wide array of, of service levels there that we offer. As far as medical direction goes and conflicts of, um, you know, kind of training or patient handoffs go, uh, that works really well in a lot of the other areas we work with. Um, we work with Landover Ambulance, Elko Ambulance, uh, other flight providers, and all of them having different medical directors. And there's always a, 
a smooth patient handoff. And so if there were to ever be some very specific issue where there may be some kind of continuity of care concerns, that was, that's always something we can iron out down the road if that, if that was to be something that we discovered. Okay. Anyone else? Anybody got anything else about what we've discussed or what, what's going on here? Uh, go ahead, please come forward. Take your name. Bodie Bolo, for the record. Uh, good morning. Uh, I just kind of wanted to set something. Since I do all the filming, I kind of wanted, uh, I know, Chairman, you had a couple concerns about like collections. 